Click the link in the description for a huge discount off a two-year plan plus one additional month free from today's sponsor, NordVPN. Welcome back to the workshop. I am trying to recreate from scratch my very own ratchet socket wrench from Damascus steel, because everything's better in Damascus. In the last episode, we made this. We also installed DRO on the milling machine, and we're going to go put it straight to use now. Objective number one is square this up so that it sits in line with these round sections. So enough milling about here. Let's mill about there. Zero, zero, flip it. Zero, zero, one. That is awesome. Okay, so we've come out of the mill and here's what we've got. All of these sides are square and parallel to each other and are running central to the round bar that we turned on the lathe. This face here, we've machined down to match to the width of the socket wrench that we're recreating. And our next steps involve the creation of all of these holes. There's functionally hole work that's done from two sides. We've got an A side and a B side. We're gonna start on the A side and you'll see we have an outer counter bore for the big hole, an outer counter bore for the small hole. We have the main bore for the big hole, the main bore for the small hole. We then have the through hole that goes the entire way through. That's six or so individual holes that are flat bottomed in nature of different depths. You can see that bore goes deeper than that bore and are nowhere near standard sizes, 34.6 millimeters. So unfortunately, it's not just a question of drilling a hole. A regular drill has a point on it so that it can keep itself running straight while it's drilling a nice hole. But on top of that, regular drills would be extremely expensive if you were trying to get them in all sorts of funky sizes and six of those funky sizes. Which means in order to make those holes, I get to buy duplicate tooling that I already have in Montana. Ah. Oh, it's glorious. So this, it's not what we need right now. We actually need it at a later stage in this project. What we really need is a boring set. Oh, that's so dull. I know. With the set comes a bunch of these cutters, tungsten carbide tipped, that fit inside the bunch of holes that we've got. They can be locked down, and then, as you can see, you have a lower male dovetail part of the assembly, you have an upper female dovetail part of the assembly, and here we have a micrometer dial that allows you to move the lower assembly. That means that as you twist it, it gets offset from the center line of the tool, pushing the cutting tip out in accordance with the amount that it's twisted on the micrometer dial. This will enable us to make very accurate cuts because each dial spacing is 0.02 millimeters, which is a thousandth of an inch. So we can very precisely work down all the surfaces that we need to work down. We're gonna do as much roughing as we can with drill bits. So for now, we're going to put our part in the mill and start laying out and opening up holes. In the mill, I put this right here, it's a little wiggler. You can see this lower half is attached to the top half, it's sprung, and that, once it's spinning and running true, will pop out when it touches the side of our workpiece. This allows us to find the center line. And this is also where the DRO comes into its own because it allows you to super simply find the center of parts. So, turn this on, and I'm bringing the table into the tool until it begins to contact. It's beginning to run true, and then it's gonna pop out. There we go. So with that, I can now zero my Y-axis, traverse across, bring it into contact, and wait for it to kick. There's the kick. Now I go half, Y, perfect. So we can now come to zero on here, and that tool is perfectly in the middle of the part in the Y-axis. Now on our X-axis, and there's the kick. X is minus three. Now we come across to 47 millimeters. Yes, we're now perfectly in line with our top large A-side hole. All right, so we get to try this out for the first time. What speed do we use? Nice and slow, easy does it and all that. Let's see what happens. Ah, 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 it's horrible. I don't think it like 
that depth of cut. Maybe we're trying a little bit too hard. Hey, there we go, that's pretty good. Maybe it wants it slower. All righty, it's a nice surface finish, but uh, we're gonna be here a while. Well, fun learning lesson. I tell you, I'm thrilled, I've learned. If you push it in too deep, the tool will break. This was a stupid project for me to take on. This is not an efficient means of making chips. This takes forever. It is a nightmare. I'm constantly resharpening this tool bit here, but we're doing it. Here's what we're copying. We have this depth created, this through hole. So on the example we're recreating, we have done all the hole work on this side. We're now moving over to our large hole here. This is 24 millimeters. We've made that 24 millimeters, and we now create our main counter bore. It's happening. This DRO is so useful, not only for finding out where the holes go, but also for the depths. I'll show you how I'm using it. Since I won't lose my position, since I got the DRO, I move the table across. I gently bring the tool down until it just contacts the steel. I pull the depth stop up to stop it there. I can now get this out of the way zero my Z or Z axis, use the table of measurements that I pulled off the original, find A, inset depth, nope. It's right at the bottom. Tiny dip. <laughs> Jamie, did you mess with my bloody table? <laughs> God, you got me. I've had this in front of me for days. Here's Jamie's personal contribution to this cause here, and you can see the value is 88 millimeters. <laughs> Bloody hell, these are confusing. Big hole, small door, big B, big hole, A, big hole, depth. There we go, 12.6 millimeters. I now bring the knee up, 12.6 millimeters. I now know when I reach the quill depth stop, I reach the very bottom of the hole we need. Time to do a hell of a lot more fiddling with this tool and cutting tiny chips. Are there. Next up, we have to make these holes. These are clearance holes, they're unthreaded. On the back, they will be countersunk. But since it's all set up and centered up, we'll drill it from here. I am thrilled to bits. A side is done. Those holes were two full days of work. It was ridiculous, the amount of tool adjusting I had to do and tool sharpening, but we got it done, A side is done, and you're about to have a safer internet browsing experience. This episode has been sponsored by NordVPN, which is a virtual private network that now also boasts Nord threat protection. Threat protection will neutralize cyber threats before they can do damage to you and help identify malware-ridden files. It will stop you from landing on malicious websites and blocks trackers and intrusive ads. When you turn on threat protection in your NordVPN app, it'll even protect you when you're not connected to a VPN. So not only do you have the freedom and flexibility to access the internet from any of their thousands of servers across 60 countries, giving you access to streaming content you otherwise wouldn't have, giving you extra anonymity and the opportunity to be having it on six devices at the same time, you also get this new incredible threat protection. So please get started by clicking my link in the description, which is nordvpn.com forward slash forge. And there you will get a huge discount on a two year plan plus one additional month for free. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you Nord for sponsoring this video. Please also go check out the Alex Steel Co. We've got grind is in stock, ready to ship for your knife-making journey. And the newest steels color is dropping soon. Bye-bye.